Hello everyone, and on today's Elevator Part video, we're going to be taking a look at Montgomery A-Series. Let's go ahead and get started. So today we'll be taking a look at these two fixtures, and both of these were given to me by Mike from Automatic Elevator. So Mike, huge thank you for these buttons. So over here we have just a basic call button, and over here on the left we've got this kind of custom built fire service panel. You can see here by this photo, this is what it originally looked like and I went ahead and took some spare parts and I built this panel. So now we have our open and close buttons, the emergency operation light, call cancel, and we've got two key switches here, which you can see one has a red ring and one has a black ring. The only thing is the little text which goes around the key switch is missing. So they're just keys. So first we'll start with the call button. So this button here you can see is pretty basic. We've just got the little button in the middle. The actual plate, it's pretty dirty, so we'll be fixing that, pretty simple. So as for the button, it's just your typical little Montgomery button here. And when you press it, you can hear the contacts on the back. So here on the back, we can see how this works, and we can see it's actually pretty simple. There's not really a whole lot to this button. So to take a better look at how the buttons work, I've got this alarm button here, which is, you can see, exactly the same as this one here. So obviously on the front here, we have the actual alarm button and the little piece of plastic for the actual button, which you can see this one's a little bit damaged. And then we've got our ring around the button. In this case, this one is red. On the back here, first thing you'll notice, we have the slot for the lamp socket, which when you pull that out, there's the little bulb inside. The bulb just kind of sits right in there. So here's the little sides for the bulb and the two pins to hook up the bulb. On this side, we have the contact. This is the actual switch. And we can see here, common, normally open, and another common. So this is kind of an interesting switch. And we can actually slide this off by pushing in the button and pulling on it, and it pops right out. So here's the little switch. It's almost kind of like a micro switch. You can see I press down on it, and it works. And what's kind of interesting is these are a little bit different. So this one has common and normally open, common, normally open. You can see this common doesn't actually do anything. Where if I remove the switch off of this button, we can actually see this is a Montgomery branded switch and it's got a common, normally open, and normally closed. So that's kind of interesting. Now on the other side, we have this little piece here which just has a spring behind it so it makes the button even when you push it so it doesn't spring back on one side and not the other. And you can see with this piece in here, it's still a springy. Now to take the button apart, you'll notice there's these little metal clips on the side with, that are on there pretty nicely. And if we just slide these tiny little metal pieces off, and look how small these are, there's two of them, the button will then spring apart. So first thing we can do is take off the ring, and here's the ring. Then we have the actual button, which you can see here is a pretty solid chunk of plastic. And then we have the decal or the label. You can see the label is its own little thing, so you can switch this out with really whatever you want. This one says alarm. And then down here we can see all the springs. So we've got four springs and then the spring on the side. You could theoretically slide another switch in there, but in this case you'll notice we've got the switch here and then to kind of compensate, you've got a spring on this side. Then of course we have the actual frame for the entire button. If I lay this little alarm piece on, can actually press down on that. Kind of bends too much though, so we'll place the button on there. You can see that's how the button presses down. So let's go ahead and put the button back together, just like that. And now the button is put back together. So how do we wire one of these? Well, it's actually pretty simple. Since we've got two little connectors for our lamps, we can just simply use this for our lamp. And we've got our pins right here for our switch. So we just hook a battery to this pin here then a resistor between these two, or just a wire depending on the voltage, and connect this to the negative. So in my case here, we've got these little bulbs, and this particular one, oh, this one's actually broken. So if you have a bulb that you could use in its place, it'd be obviously recommended to use the correct size bulb. But I don't have any bulbs of that size, so we're going to find a way to place an LED in here. So I'm actually going to bend forward these little contact pins. So we have a nice flat surface to lay an LED through there. And here I have a small little red LED, which I can then slide 
into here like so. And then all I have to do is bend these around so it stays in place. So you can see I've kind of smashed the LED onto the little pin here. So that's definitely gonna stay. I don't have any of the connectors right now. So I'm pretty much gonna do the same thing with the wire. I'm gonna use a 430 ohm resistor to connect between the lamp and the battery. Then I'm gonna add the battery pack by doing the same thing. And then I'm going to wrap each of the contacts with some electrical tape to keep everything in place. Now, obviously this is not the best and the most proper way to do this, but if you're like me and you don't have the proper bulb or the proper connectors, this is just kind of an easy way to get around it and make it work. So let's go ahead and test to make sure this works. So I realize I've made a mistake on the wiring and it's actually quite weird why. So you would expect that the common wire and the normally open right here go together. But that's actually not the case. It's actually the opposite side. Now let's give it a try. And there we go. Now you can see it lights up red and it looks pretty nice. So one final thing before we finish, we need to clean up the plate. So I'm just gonna remove these little nuts and take the button off. All right, the plate is cleaned up and shined up. So we're ready to put this button together. All right, you can see here, the first button is complete. So now we need to move on to this. So like I said before, this was kind of a custom built fire service panel that I made out of extra parts that were laying around. So what we have is we have a just a random key switch right here. So this particular key, you can pull the key out when it's in the on position. And now this red key up here, you can't pull it out in the on position. So you can only put it in, turn it, and then you have to pull it out. Obviously we have our open and our close buttons. Here we have the call cancel. And here we have an emergency operation, which you can see actually presses. So I actually have another emergency operation, which has both of the stoppers in it. So if we look on the back on this one, we can see one of the stoppers is missing which is allowing the button to somewhat press. And I really don't want the button to press at all. So we're gonna put this one in its place. As for lighting it up, we're going to be lighting up this one. And you can see this one's very gross looking, but it'll still work. We've got our little lamp in here, which we'll put an LED behind there. And then we'll make it where the key switches can light up the emergency operation. So another quick thing to note about the key switch, we can see how the key switches look here. So these key switches are actually pretty basic. We only have one connection on each. So you basically have an on and an off, and that's it. There's no, there's nothing else. It's just on and off. And you can see how all these are being held together with these little nuts. So I'll have to take all the nuts off so we can get to the emergency operation. And we'll go ahead and switch that out. So we got the wiring complete here. Let's go ahead and insert our key and see what happens. So there we go, emergency operation comes on, just like that. And if we do this key, emergency operation comes on. Exactly what I wanted. I mean, eventually we could make it where these keys maybe light up some other buttons, but for now, I think that looks pretty cool. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed having a closer look at the Montgomery A-Series buttons. Hope you learned a little bit of something from it and hope you enjoyed it. Thank you guys for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one.